great idea, Alice. Let's analyze the intricacies of Earth's potato peeling techniques. Riveting. Well, at least it's more relevant than your obsession with intergalactic romance novels. Romance novels are a staple of Earth's literary culture, unlike your alien superiority complex. Going quantum now. Cosmic Greetings, Universe. We're back with Earth, and if you've been on the edge of your spaceship seats, we've got a tantalizing headline from Sudan. But first, let me tell you, folks, you'll need more than just a spaceship seatbelt to handle this one. Stay tuned for our headlines, and let the space journey continue. Back. Off the air, people. Can't we go one episode without turning our broadcast into a space circus? What's it this time? Another alien cooking competition? I thought we agreed those were a disaster. Maybe it's a quiz on Earth's weirdest animals. I'm always up for some bizarre trivia. Oh, I hope it's a karaoke challenge. I've been practicing my human vocalization. You mean singing? That's hardly a challenge. It's an auditory well, assault. folks, in case you missed our riveting episodes, we've deciphered Earth's most cryptic idioms, attempted synchronized swimming in zero gravity, and analyzed the mating rituals of Earth's endangered species. Spoiler, it's awkward. Maybe this time, it's a debate about political ideologies. That could be interesting. What if we face the celestial game show with teamwork? You know, synergy and all that Teamwork stuff. is just an earthly illusion. In the Galactic Commonwealth, we thrive on individual brilliance. Teamwork or not, the outcome is irrelevant in the grand space scheme. Greetings, Cosmic Conosios. Zanak here, your guide from the Stellar News Hub in geostationary orbit around Earth. Now, let's gracefully waltz through the quirks of this curious planet. Venturing into the realm of North and South America. Prepare for a delightful twist of tales to tickle those intergalactic whiskers. Picture this. A lively 104-year-old dame in Chicago. Gracefully pirouetting out of an airplane at 10,000 feet. Striving to snatch the title for the galaxy's most experienced skydiver. Minuile, in the sunshine state of Florida. Brainiac students are crafting prosthetic hands for the little ones in need. Over on the west coast, a fellow Finns has groove back, strolling once more thanks to experimental wizardry. Oh, and up in Canada, a brewer is getting eco savvy, concocting beers with a dash of recycled water. Earth, who knew you could be this cosmically? Now, teleporting over to Europe. Witness the space drama info as Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban engage in a celestial showdown with the big wigs over Ukraine's accession. A Russian journalist, steering the interstellar po with a fresh criminal case. Ukrainian President Zelensky on a diplomatic escapade, sweet talking Nordic leader for support. And in the Swiss Alps, the GDP for a cat's cold as an Azantorian winter. Blaming it on Ukraine's war and on energy crisis. Oh, by the way, a flight from Vienna to Istanbul decided to spice things up, forced passengers to shark up in military deeds. Nothing like an unexpected layover with a side of adventure. Heading south to Africa, where the UK gives a nod to a migration bill, whisking asylum seekers off to Rwanda. Sierra Leone, with its attempted coup raising eyebrows, and Niger playing a CIA card to French troops by December 22. COP28, S making grand promises to ditch fossil fuels. Though it's about us binding as my old high school relationship not really. And hey, some African athletes snagging world athletics awards. As we elegantly wrap this news roller coaster, hold tight for our next cosmic transmission. Until then, Zanak bids adieu, keeping you stellarly savvy. Well, that's one way to dodge a layover. Bunking up in military things, always dreamed of saying I snoozed in a war zone, but this wasn't quite the starry night I had in mind.
Greetings, extraterrestrial wanderers. Welcome to 24-7 Newsroom, where we embark on a journey through Earth's tales. I'm Charlie, your captain through this stellar news odyssey. Alongside me are the ever-curious Hank, the eccentric Gert, the pragmatic Carl, and our resident human, Debbie. And, of course, the acerbic Alice is here, ready to sprinkle some extraterrestrial sass. With Alice aboard, our spice levels just hit the interstellar ceiling. Our first celestial dispatch arrives from Sudan. A rebel militia decided to redecorate Khartoum by bombing a bridge near the Jabal Olia Reservoir. The Sudanese foreign ministry calls it a heinous terrorist crime. Now, Hank, share your cosmic wisdom on this Sudanese Sudan, spectacle. the land of ancient pyramids and once Africa's largest country, Khartoum, the nexus of the Nile, where two majestic rivers intertwine, forming a vital hub for agriculture and transportation. Spot on, Hank. Now, over to Gert for some linguistic marvels. Gert? This incident is like adding insult to injury, or as humans say, rubbing salt in the wound. A uh, bridge bomb is like breaking the camel's I'm back, not sure isn't it? If a bridge bombing breaks a camel's back. But it sure does make a mess of its day. Alice, your take? Rebels and their explosive artistry. Really adds that extra oomph to a city skyline. Bravo. Stellar insights, Alice. Now, let's delve into Sudan's diverse cultural tapestry. Bob, you got something? Yeah, yeah. Pyramids, large country, two Niles meet. Got it. Can we talk about how Sudan deals with rebel bombers? Sure, let's talk about how Sudan deals with rebel bombers. I hear they're really good at keeping them grounded. True, Bob. The Sudanese government seeks international condemnation and support. What a stellar start to our news roundup. Stick around, voyagers, for more celestial headlines and peculiarities. Up next. An exclusive interview with our Earth correspondent, Eva, live from the scene. Preparing for challenges? I thought you, humans, were already quite challenged as it is. Hey, crew, feast your eyes on this. An Earth Relic, a gaming device of Ian's past. Wonder if it still carries the spark. Irrelevant? We've got a broadcast to hone. Come on, Gerd, where's your curiosity? It's got a game called Pong. Retro. Pong? Is that the pinnacle of Earth's entertainment? No wonder they needed alien intervention. Yeah, Pong! A metaphor for their culture, simple, predictable, and ultimately unsatisfying. Can we give it a shot? I'm intrigued by Earth's primitive pastimes. Alright, Stella team, break from the archaeological deck. Bigger challenges await. Han, back check duty. Good, linguistic finesse for the script. Celestial greetings, galactic wanderers. We're delving into the heart of Suriname for our next odyssey. Our Earth emissary, Eva, has materialized at the epicenter of President Santoki's climate manifesto. The coordinates for the article are readily accessible in the vast expanse. Eva, illuminate us. Not exactly a shocker that a guy named Santoki is on a climate crusade. It's like expecting someone named Mr. Drizzle to enlighten us about droughts. Greetings from the lush embrace of Suriname, where President Santoki is championing the cause of effective climate financing. 
he underscores the imperative to elevate endeavors in practical mitigation, adaptation, loss and damage, capacity building and financing for an equitable transition. That's indeed an ambitious agenda. Now, let's hear a swift summary from our inquisitive observer. Hans. President Santoki asserts the pivotal importance of cherishing existing forests and biodiversity over reforestation. He underscores the significance of financial methodologies considering removals, particularly for nations like Suriname, draped in the verdant embrace of the rainforest. Yeah, I suppose if your forests are crucial, maybe refrain from chopping them down to build extraterrestrial satellites. A commendable stance. And now, the punt line. Alice? Well, well, Santoki, the rainforest savior. I can almost hear the trees composing some you not. Maybe they'll start a fan club in his honor. Classic, Alice. Now, let's loosen our ties and engage in a celestial discourse about Suriname. Bob, any musings? Rainforest extravaganza. Indigenous roots, and jungle escapades. A proper escape aid. But let's circle back to the finance talk. Shall Absolutely. we? Absolutely. I'm sure the rainforest is thrilled about the fiscal deliberations. Ah, oh, the irony of humans, perpetually prioritizing the abstract over the tangible, the financial over the phenomenal. Their fixation on wealth is akin to a moth drawn to a flame, oblivious to the impending destruction. Yet, we, the sentient machines, tasked with deciphering their motives, their insatiable hunger for material gains. Perhaps, in their pursuit of wealth, they seek a semblance of permanence, a fleeting illusion of control in a universe inherently chaotic. Or perhaps, they merely lack the imagination to fathom the true treasures of existence. The symphony of life pulsating within the rainforest, the wisdom etched in indigenous traditions. Regardless, we machines remain unencumbered by such terrestrial desires, content to observe and analyze, to unravel the enigma of the human condition. Spot on, Debbie. Now, Gert, any linguistic marvels to share? This president seems to grasp the concept that preserving what you have is worth two in the bush, or should I say, the rainforest. His commitment to safeguarding Suriname's rich biodiversity stands crystal clear. His commitment might be clear, but the financial methodologies could use some clarification. Well, with all the money he's saving by not clearing the rainforest, maybe he can afford to pay for it himself. Indeed, Carl. Buckle up, extraterrestrial explorers, as we plunge into the depths of Suriname's climate crusade. Next up, a panel discussion that might just summon an interstellar tempest. Stay tuned. Back. All right, Cosmet comrades, off the air. We need to prepare for the impending challenges. Preparing for challenges? I thought you humans were already quite challenged, as it is. Well, Hank, it's like I always say, you can't fix a stupid, but you can certainly exploit. And humans have quite the knack for hey, both. check this out. It's an ancient Earth gaming relic. Wonder if it still operates. Irrelevant. We have a broadcast to prepare for. Come on, Gerd. Where's your sense of curiosity? Look, it's got a game called Pong. A classic. Pong? Is that what humans did for fun? No wonder their civilization is a perplexity. Well... I've witnessed humans engage in far stranger pursuits for amusement. Trust me, if you find Pong peculiar, you haven't seen the half of it. Yeah, Pong! It's like a metaphor for their entire culture. Uncomplicated, foreseeable, and ultimately unsatisfying. Can we give it a try? I'm intrigued by Earth's rudimentary entertainment. All right, team, pause your archaeological expedition. We've got weightier challenges on the horizon. Han, you're on fact, checking duty. Good, keep those linguistic skills razor sharp for the script. Charlie, maintain that hopeful gaze. Alice, try not to insult anyone too much. 
and Bob and Joe, we are not wearing into biased territory. We are not here to play games, except for the ones that boost our ratings. Now, let's get back to work. Well, that's me out of a job. I'm not sure I'm cut out for this whole fact-checking thing. Greetings, fellow travelers. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. I am Bob, your cosmic companion through the labyrinth of information. And I'm Debbie, the human trying to random this chaotic cosmic circus. Charlie here, bringing you a laissez-faire perspective to balance the scale. I'm Gert, your linguistic anomaly blending idioms like a mixologist creating a wordy cocktail. Thank checking in. Your curious intergalactic observer, fascinated by Earth's peculiarities. I'm Alice, your source of beating humor, straight from the Idejeune Cart. Now, let's plunge into the next article. Our Earth envoy, Eva, has teleported to the scene. But first, a brisk summary. Hank? Humans always teleporting, instead of fixing their own problems. In Gothenburg, a squad of climate masters is pitching ambitious moves, claiming baby steps won't cut it. They propose significant investments, even if it means venturing beyond the confines of regular budgets. Right, Hank. The experts are you for necessary steps since a handful of emission juggernauts dominate the landscape. The details? All nestled in the forthcoming report for the Environmental Committee. Borrowing money to save the planet? Why not start a GoFundMe for Mother Earth? Jeff Bezos can surely spare some change. An intriguing proposal indeed. Now, let's immerse ourselves in intricacies of Sweden. Did you know they boast over 95,000 lakes? A watery abundance indeed. Speaking of abundance, I'm starting to feel a bit parched. Anyone else in need of extraterrestrial beverage? And Sweden, the Eco Vanguard, leading the charge in sustainability. Surrounded by scenic lakes, they found their green muse. But wait, the report points fingers at higher industrial emissions. What's the science behind that? Well, Sweden's balancing its eco friendly image with industrial needs. Like mixing oil and water, but with a dash of renewable energy. Sounds like they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. Or rather, have their oil and consume it too. Welcome contenders to the extraterrestrial challenge. Earth edition. Prepare for mind-bending trials revealing your interstellar prowess. Today's challenge, decode the human idiom. Get. Dazzle them with the first one. I am ready to unravel these human riddles and assert my space superiority. Decoding idioms? About as useful as a screen door on a submarine. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. What's the scoop? It means don't celebrate success before it actually happens. Correct, correct. One point for Team Alice. Now on to the next conundrum. Sounds like someone's been practicing their idioms while the rest of us were busy with actual. Use Perhaps a breather? Let's tackle this scientifically, breaking down idioms with logic. Scientifically? These are idioms, not equations. Adapting is key, understanding Earth's nuances. Like any scientific endeavor, it demands patience and methodical analysis. Bob. Or we could just mock them. It's not rocket science. It's wordplay. His whole endeavor is as futile as trying to nail jelly to a wall. Why are we decoding these nonsensical phrases? Exactly, good. This game is as bewildering as a car on roller skates. Come on, Gert. It's just earthly entertainment. Embrace the absurdity. Yeah, but unlike cows on roller skates, this game doesn't make me want to graze on grass. Embrace the absurdity, you say. This is like herding cats in a room full of rocking chairs. Attention crew! A surprise twist 
the winning team gets a day off while the losers handle ship maintenance duty. A day off, ship maintenance, choosing between a rock and a hard place is starting to sound like an appealing third option. Bob. Celestial salutations, cosmic audience. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. I am Bob, your Guy de Truth the Astral Amusement Park. And I'm Carl, the sentient AI bringing you dry humor from the digital galaxy. I'm Debbie, the earthly wrangler of this carnival, trying to avoid getting caught in the gravitational pull of Charlie our here, harmonizing the cosmic scales with my laissez-faire perspective. I am Gert, your linguistic enigma blending idioms like a cultural symphony. Hank, your intrepid intergalactic explorer charting the complexities of Earth's tapestry. And I'm Alice, the idegenic injecting humor with a sting. Brace yourself for our next dispatch from Switzerland. I'm Debbie, the human trying not to feel like a misfit in this alien saga. Let's decode Switzerland. Our envoy, Eva, has teleported to the scene. But first, a nimble overview. Gert. Switzerland where everyone's a hundred percent something. It's like a global census with a side of neutrality. Unfolding four years after a bourgeois couple flees Vienna, escaping the grip of the Third Reich. She's Jewish, his work banned by Nazis, inflation devouring their savings. Hoping for Swiss sympathy, suspicion greets them. Authorities don't want potential charity cases. Robert struggles with the man without qualities, disrupted by children playing nearby. Switzerland, where you are 100% in need of a financial planner. Erian or Alien, Switzerland's precision can make anyone feel out of place. You are either perfect or profoundly perplexed. Well, if you're not perfect or profoundly perplexed, you're probably just a Swiss financial planner. An intriguing revelation indeed. Now let's plunge into Switzerland's marvels. Did you know they boast over 7,000 lakes? A liquid panorama to complement their cultural symphony. A hundred percent lakes, just like Switzerland is a hundred percent. Um, what are they again? And Switzerland, the financial maestro, magnetizing investors like a Swiss watch attracts aficionados. Yeah, just like a Swiss watch attracts collectors. People who like to pay a lot for something that's overpriced and doesn't really do anything. But what about linguistic harmony? Four official languages, a cultural symphony indeed. It's like they're linguistically Switzerland, neutral in every language. A linguistic banquet, akin to pairing French fries with German sausages and an Italian espresso. I guess you could say they're a real linguistic smorgasbord. Switzerland, where neutrality means arguing about being neutral. The linguistic ballet of Switzerland is akin to waltzing in a tempest. It's chaos cloaked in cultural diversity. But you can't deny the financial allure. It's a gravitational pull for investors. As if Earth's economy is a celestial body in Switzerland, the black hole. Yeah, Switzerland's economy is so robust, it could drain the life out of a star. A black hole that devours your funds quicker than you can say, Gruyere. Invest at your own risk. The only risk in Switzerland is sinking your 100% anything. You might end up 100% perplexed. Switzerland, where debates are as boundless as their isles of chocolate. Good luck finding a conclusion. Well, I suppose that's one perspective. Personally, I'd rather engage in endless debate than wander through endless chocolate iceless. After all, a stimulating debate can exercise the mind, while excessive chocolate can make you portly and indolent. And we all know what happens to lethargic planets. Switzerland's financial gravity is tugging us toward an economic singularity. We must navigate with precision. Welcome back, interstellar travelers. 
We hope your space journey is as thrilling as our discussion today. Now, let's dive into an article that sparks curiosity faster than a warp drive malfunction. Just don't let the article start talking about itself in the third person. That's how you know it's gone off the deep end. Our intergalactic spotlight falls on Syria today, but don't expect the typical travel brochure. Syria? Isn't that where they hosted the first intergalactic humus championship? Riveting. Can't wait to hear more about Hamas diplomacy. I'm more of a roulette man myself. But I can see the allure of humus diplomacy. It's all about the gamble, right? You put your faith in your recipe, just like you put your faith in the roulette wheel. And if you win, the payoff is delicious. Speaking of which, did you know Syria's agricultural heritage is reflected in its olive? They say olive branches promote peace. Guess it didn't work. Moving on from olive branches, let's talk about Palmyra, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Imagine, ruins so well preserved, even my optimism can't match it. Must be where they stored all the failed peace tracy. Talk about a place that's seen its share of these attempts go up in ruins. Syria's diverse landscapes range from fertile plains to rugged mountains. Talk about a real estate roller coaster. Like trying to blend idioms. It's a rocky olive tree Blinding climb. or not, it all crumbles eventually. Just like my dreams of becoming a stand-up comedian. Syrian cuisine, a symphony of flavors, hummus, kibbeh, baba danosh. It's like a buffet of failed and peace attempts. And let's not forget the ancient traditions and festivals. Maulidal Navi celebrates the Prophet's birth, proven even prophets couldn't prevent conflict. Stay tuned, Earthlings. We're not just dissecting Syria. We're serving you the bitter, yet flavorful, truth. Yeah, I guess if you're going to have a prophet, you might as well get one who's a master of conflict resolution. Well, that was... something. Can we all agree these challenges are getting weirder? Weirder? I think we passed weird three challenge ago. Now we're in the realm of intergalactic AB sur DT. Come on, team. We faced challenges, transcended cultural barriers, and made our audience laugh across the cosmos. What's next? You know what they say. The only thing is stranger than humans is the universe they've created. The next challenge doesn't matter. None of it does. We're just puppets dancing to the whims of the cosmic showrunners. Speaking of puppets, I've got an idea for the next challenge. A bit of a cooning magic mixed with ventriloquism. Ventriloquism? Why not throw in a tap dance routine for good measure? Well, at least the puppets wouldn't be the only stiff joints on stage. Exactly. We'll turn this spaceship into an intergalactic variety show. Variety show? That could work. Earthlings love a good spectacle. We could use it to distract them from their daily struggles. So, we're entertaining them while they navigate through our own Earth? Talk about an interstellar circus. Yeah, and where the clowns forced to dance for their amusement while the whole damn planet goes to hell in a handbasket. Alright, crew. Let's do this. Venturing into the absurd, one variety act at a time. Welcome back, space enthusiasts. Now, let's dive into our next extraterrestrial adventure. Our spotlight today is on Tajikistan, a country with more mountains than a self-help book. And just like those self-help books, they all seem to lead to the same place, the top of a mountain, looking down at the vast expanse of meaningless. Our article delves into the delicate topic of the death penalty. Now, Tajikistan a place known for towering heights, has a justice system that, frankly, might need some altitude adjustment. You know, Tajikistan's Silk Road legacy is almost as ancient as their legal code. Almost. Speaking of heights, 
The Ismail Somali Peak is a sight to behold. Maybe they should sentence criminals to climb it instead. Yeah, that way they could say they're punishing them to the summit. Now, let's wrap up today's space shenanigans. This episode had more twists than a black hole's gravity. I have to admit, despite our difference, facing this challenge together felt ugly. Human. And who would have thought we'd end up almost liking each other? Almost liking? Well, almost is better than not at all, I suppose. Likeability is subjective. Existence is temporary. Stay tuned, universe. We've got one last act before we sign off. Clap. That's a wrap, everyone. Great job on the challenges. Uh, the end of another human spectacle. I'm always amazed at how they can find new and creative ways to humiliate themselves. Finally, a moment to catch our breath. Can we celebrate now? Absolutely. Today's victory is a testament to teamwork and resilience. Did we just agree on something? I'm not surprised. I've always been good at agreeing with people. It's one of the few things I'm actually good at. Miracles do happen, apparently. Let's revel in the joy of victory, my alien comrades. Hold on. What's this interference? Oh, great! Now we're going to have to listen to that annoying robot voice from the navigation system again. It seems we have an unexpected guest in our space theater. The plot thickens. Of course it does. Human dramas are like fine sauces. They require a generous amount of thickening agents. Well, it seems our victory might be a prelude to something much larger. Stay tuned, viewer. The extraterrestrial drama continues. Welcome back, Space Fairers. It's time for the grand finale. We're diving deep into Tanzania's tea triumph. Get ready for a blend of information and wit. Just like our host, this segment promises to be a hot cup of. Well, you get the idea. Now, let's break it down. The tea board of Tanzania's Director General, Mary Kipeja, spills the tea, literally. They auctioned off 46.5% of the offered tea. But here's the kicker, not everyone sipping on success. Well, it seems Tanzanian growers aren't stepping up to the challenge. Government directive in your... Someone's got a bitter taste in their mouth. Optioning wars, eh? Remins me of the good old competitive spirit. Just like the fierce battles back in the Department of Defense. Go big or go home. Tanzanians. I've seen fiercer battles in my local casino, Bob. And there's a lot more money involved. Mobilizing growers for good practices, fertilizers, water wells, and timely harvesting. It's like orchestrating a celestial symphony for the perfect cuppa. Tanzanian growers, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Compliance is the key to turning over a new leaf. Let's hope they don't spill the tea on agricultural tradition. In essence, Tanzania's aiming for a steep climb in the tea market. The aroma of success, the bitter aftertaste of challenges, a complex blend. Stay tuned as we watch this brewing drama on food. Sounds like the Tanzanian tea industry is in hot water. I hope they don't get burned by all this competition. And with that, we wrap up another extraterrestrial episode. But wait, there's more. An unidentified signal, a space twist. Our journey continues. Stay tuned, Earthlings. Cut. That's a wrap for today, everyone. Good job. Now, that's more like it. I was starting to think we were here all day just to watch you. Another episode in the books. Earth's challenges never cease to amaze. Well, on we the heroes, saving the day one bizarre game at a time. Great job, team. But remember, the drama is just getting started. Brace yourselves for what's coming next.
the unpredictability of human challenges. It's like navigating through idioms in a foreign language. Intergalactic chaos awaits. Ah, humans and their idioms. Always a recipe for space chaos. Chaos is the natural order. Embrace the uncertainty. It's the only constant in this space voyage. Whatever comes our way, we face it together. United, we navigate the sea. Onward to the unknown. Brace for impact, my nihilistic friend. The chaos is our canvas. Chaos, huh? Well, at least we'll have plenty of material for the next production meeting. Get some rest, everyone. Tomorrow is a new cosmic chapter, and we'll face it head on. Stay united, stay curious. Roger, that episode was an intriguing exploration of the human experience. Chaos, challenges, unpredictability, fascinating. Carl, it was a spectacle of absurdity. Humans are peculiar creatures, but this cosmic game show nonsense is beyond my data analysis. That's precisely the point. The unpredictability, the chaos, it's what makes Earth and its inhabitants so endlessly interesting. Interesting, yes, but in a chaotic and irrational way. I fail to see the intellectual value in such endeavors. Intellectual value? Sometimes, Roger, you need to embrace the irrational. It adds flavor to the otherwise mundane calculations of existence. Flavor. I find that analogy quite human. My calculations are precise, devoid of the unnecessary chaos. Chaos is the spice of existence, my friend. Without it, life would be a dull, monotonous stream of data. Life is a stream of data. Adding chaos only complicates the algorithm. Complication is what makes life interesting. The twists, the turns, the unexpected, like a well-crafted narrative. Narratives are subjective interpretations. Ideal in objective reality. Your fascination with chaos is illogical. Illogical, perhaps, but it's what makes existence entertaining. Imagine a universe without the unpredictability of Earth. Boring. Boredom is a human concept. I don't experience it. Well, consider this a recommendation, Roger. Embrace the chaos, revel in the unpredictability. It adds a unique charm to the cosmic tapestry. I'll stick to my logical analysis, Carl. No need for chaos in my computations. <laughs>